Well, we thank God for his goodness and for the opportunity to stand one more time. And I was thinking, uh, you've heard some great preaching around here. <laughs> so, I mean, Will and Hoy yes, and, and Johnny and Chucky. <laughs> I mean, uh, all four of them. I, I, I said, man, that, that was good. And uh, and I'm, I know good preaching. I know that uh, brother Hoy and Will has just been a, a real blessing recently. And I thank God for Will, uh, his leadership and his study time. I know. It takes time, and so I just wanted to say, I appreciate the preachers. God bless you. Yeah, I think I think you know that uh, you have a great, great team here, and so they let the old man come back <laughs> once in, once in a while, and uh, I. I appreciate that. God's been good. We, I don't have anything uh, to complain about. The Lord's been gracious to us. I'm going to just throw this in, and by way of introduction, um, Angie told me some time ago that she wanted uh, me and her to go back on the hill. And if you don't know, what the hill is, most of the old times, we always called the church on the hill. And so she chose Friday to go back. And uh, many years ago, we were digging a baptistry. Couldn't afford one inside or <laughs> they run us out of the hills, Burr River. And so Angie and I were working, she was five years old. We were working on that outside baptistry. And by the way, after we built it, the kids were afraid of it, wouldn't go in. <laughs> <laughs> but we, uh, I got talking to her about the Lord years ago. And she finally broke down and she got saved right there yeah. by that old <laughs> baptistry. And we went back Friday, Brother Jim, and just went to the spot where God saved her and kneeled, knelt there and had prayer and had a good time in the Lord. And she she said, I want a rock of remembrance. Praise God. And she got her a couple rocks. And I'm glad it's still good today. Praise the Lord. I thought of some memories and I, I got some good ones. Praise his name. All right, I'll quit gabbing and try and preach a little. If you have your Bibles, I ask you to turn to Ezekiel chapter 16. We'll read verses 1 through 6. Let's stand together. Ezekiel chapter 16, <clears throat> verses 1 through 6. All right, Ezekiel 16, begin with verse 1. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations. Uh -huh. And say, Thus saith the Lord God unto Jerusalem, Thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite, and thy mother a Hittite. And as for thy nativity, in the day thou wast born, thy navel was not cut, neither was thou washed in water yeah. to supple thee? Thou hast not salted at all, nor swaddled at all. Now I pity thee to do any of these unto thee, to have compassion upon thee. But thou hast cast out into the open field to the loathing of thy person in the day that thou wast born. Yeah. And when I pass by thee, to praise God. Yeah. I'm glad when he passes by. Yeah. Thank the Lord. When I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thine own blood, I said unto thee, When thou wast 
in thy blood live. Yeah, I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood live. If God would help me for a few minutes today, I'd like to preach on the, the Lord pass by. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for your love. Thank you, dear God, for the blessed Holy Spirit that we felt here again today. And we praise you, Lord, for your, your goodness. You've blessed us and been so good to us. And we thank you, God, and continue to bless and use this church. God, the chosen to be saved. Now, Lord, for a few minutes today, as we look at this sweet story, dear God, we pray that you anoint us, speak to hearts. Dear God, there's already been some that's come for prayer and others have told me they also need to come. May they come before the service is ended. Bless the word of God and give us liberty. God, we pray. We'll thank and praise you and everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. You can be seated. This 16th chapter of Ezekiel is somewhat of a sad chapter. When in the city of Jerusalem is likened to a newborn baby girl that's abandoned at birth yeah. by her mother. Here's a little baby that's born, and she's unwanted. I, I'll be honest, I can't understand that. You know, there's multitudes of babies that are unwanted, and abortion is, is run rampant. And some, did you see, by the way, I believe it was this week that Belgium was the first country that legalized euthanasia. I remember when they, when they uh, passed, it was legal to have an abortion. You know what the preachers, many of them said, it, they said it will lead to euthanasia. And brother, it is. And mark it down, and will come here too. Yeah. Brother, we're on a downward spiral. Right. Amen. And uh, we're going to pay the price. Uh, if you, if you have a little baby that's born that's handicapped or something wrong with it, you, they can just put it to sleep or, or let it die. My, how we're going to pay for that. My, my, when Americans went far away from God. But here's a little girl that's unwanted. Here's a little girl that's unclean. They didn't even have the decency to clean her up. She was dirty. And she was unclaimed. Nobody claimed her. And they, they passed her by. None I, the Bible said, had compassion on her. She was unloved. And so this little girl was cast out in an open field, left to die. This same thing happened many years ago. I got the story, but many years ago in Miami, there was a baby that was left on the steps of a hospital. I suppose for some reason the mother or father did not want it. And they left it at least on the steps of the hospital where somebody could find it. And that little girl, it was taken in to the hospital and raised there in the hospital. Now you say, I don't know about that. Brother, I was thinking today, I know a, a man that many of you know. Some of you don't know him. And I won't give you his name, but he's a great preacher. And in my, my estimation, one of the finest preachers, preached some of the greatest sermons that I ever heard. He's from eastern Kentucky. I'll give you a hint. But I, I was sitting here. He called me for a revival one time. And I, I thought, dear Lord, here is one of the greatest preachers in, in the country, in my estimation. And by the way, Clyde Perry is another one. I'm telling you. One of the greatest teacher I've heard. Calvin Evans. But anyway, he called me for revival. And I said, Lord, what can I tell them people that they hadn't heard? But we're sitting there, and he pointed over to his little daughter that was playing the organ, and her sister was playing the piano. 
And that little girl was abandoned at birth. And this preacher said to me, I found her when she was just a little baby. He said it was raining and someone left her out in the rain. He said, I took her and put her in my flag jacket. He took her to the hospital and they checked her out and they did not know what to do with her. And so he took her home and he raised her, brother. And he said, look at her. He said, some man's trash, but my treasure. <laughs> Praise God forever. Thank God. And so this little girl was somebody's trash, but praise God, she was our Lord's treasure. And so the, the, the Bible said that the Lord Jesus passed by. And when Jesus passed by, uh, he heard a little baby crying yeah. and went over to where she was and had compassion on her and picked her up. And I believe he held her close to his heart. And he might have said, sweetheart, you have been unwanted, but I want you. You have been un unclean, but I'll clean you up. You have been unloved, but I'll love you. Thank God with an everlasting love. And the Bible said in that day, she became mine. <laughs> Praise the Lord forever. When the Lord passed by, thank God. Now, this Jesus did four things to that little girl. And maybe I just mentioned those this morning. To be brief, maybe I won't. But anyway, uh, I'll get you out in time to eat. But praise God. There's four things that the Lord did for that little girl that God does for us in salvation. The first thing that he did for that little girl in verse 9, it says he washed her. Praise God. He washed her. He took a soap, no doubt, and a warm washer rag and washed a little dirt from her body. Praise God. He cleaned her up. I'm glad for the day that he washed me. Amen. You say, what did he wash you? In the precious blood. Thank God. David said, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Thank God. I'm glad for that day that he washed me. Praise the Lord forever and cleaned me up. I'll never forget the first time that I went to Hayesville. I uh, was walking downtown, and I, they had two churches, the Methodist Church, and I saw a Baptist church. And I found that they had a monument there to Dr. George Truett. And I, I couldn't believe it, because that's an old preacher. When I was first called to preach, uh, I can go by every Saturday, Brother Jim, see old Brother Skinner, and we talk Bible, and he gave me some books by that great preacher, George Truett. And George Truett was born in Hayesville, and uh, I couldn't believe it. And they had a church there, Truett Memorial Church, built in his honor. But George Truett was a great man of God. He pastored the First Baptist Church of Dallas for over 40 years and was mightily used of God. And George Truett was one of the first preachers to use the radio as a means of getting out the gospel. And for years, they carried their 11 o'clock morning service Sunday live on the air. And so there's a lady in the church that was a nurse and and many times she had to work. She would sit with dying people. And when she had to work, she'd take her radio to work with her and try and listen to the broadcast. She was sitting with a woman that lived an awful life. And, and she at around 11 o'clock, she said to the lady, she had her radio, she said, my preacher will be preaching and 11 o'clock, would you like to listen to him? And she said, that'd be fine. And so at 11 o'clock, she turned the radio on, and Brother O. Dr. Truett preached under the anointing of God's Holy Spirit. Praise God for his presence. How we need the power and presence of God 
as never before. Old Dr. Truett preached under the anointing, and he preached from Isaiah 118. Then says, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And Brother God spoke to that lady, lady's heart. And she said, I sure wish that man could come and pray for me. And the nurse said, I'll call Dr. Troy. She called the church and got a hold of him and said, I got a woman here that's uh, nearly gone and she wants you to come and pray for her. Old Dr. Truett said, I'll be there just as quickly as I can get there. And then he got in his car and he drove across town and stopped at that little house and knocked on the door. The nurse came and let him in, let him into the bedroom where that woman laid in her sick bed. And Dr. Truett took his hat off, reached out his hand, and he said, hi, ma'am, my name is George Truett. And stuck out his hand, he shake her hand. But she pulled her hands under the covers, and she said, I, I can't shake hands with you. You're a man of God. I've lived a wicked life. My hands are dirty. I can't shake hands with you. Boy, it broke old Dr. Truett's heart. He said, ma'am, Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you, and if you'll call on his name, he'll cleanse you and make you whole. He said, I'm going to pray, and as I pray, I want you to pray and ask the Lord to save you. Old Dr. Truett began to pray, and the Holy Spirit said to him, said, quote Isaiah 118, and brother, he quoted that wonderful verse again. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And when he said that, brother, she reached out underneath the covers and said, shake hands with me. Oh, he said, I thought your hands were dirty. She said, no, thank God. I just had a blood bath. Praise God, Reverend. I'm glad as a 10-year-old boy back in the hills of West Virginia. Praise God, I had a blood bath. He washed me and made me white as snow. Thank God for the blood. Amen. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other foul I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. And so the first thing that he did was he washed her. But then secondly, he clothed her in verse 10. Brother, the Bible said that he clothed her. That little baby was naked, and the Lord put clothes on her. I thought he might have put some little booties on her feet. Praise God. He might have put some underclothes on and wrapped her in a good warm blanket. Praise the Lord. But he clothed her. Thank God. When the Lord saved me and when he saved you, he no doubt washed you, but praise God, he clothed you too. Thank the Lord forever. He clothed her, put clothes on her. Thank God. I was studying a while back, and I thought I'd read everything that could be read on the prodigal son. But I found a, a Bible scholar when the prodigal returned home. <clears throat> He, the father said, bring the best robe and put it on. And this Bible scholar said it no doubt was the father's festival garment that was worn only on grand occasions. And praise God, then nothing ever grander happened than when his boy came home. But he said, bring the best robe. And this it was the father's robe. That, that they put on him, the robe that was worn just on a special occasion. You say, what's so great about that? Thank God when I came to him, I was in rags, but he clothed me with his righteousness and in his perfection. Praise his name forever. He put uh, the best robe on me. Thank God he put shoes on that boy's feet. 
uh, they said slaves went barefoot, but thank God's sons wore shoes. Praise the Lord. I'm glad God gave us something to walk with. Amen. He washed her. Thank God. He clothed her. Then I like this too. He anointed her in verse 9. He put oil on that little girl's body that was no doubt chafed and red and dried. I, I believe that that, that might have, she might have stopped crying at that point and maybe smiled because thank God when I'm sad, the Holy Spirit makes me glad. Praise God forever. He anointed her. We know oil in the Bible is a type or picture of uh, the Holy Spirit. In Psalms 133, verses 1 and 2, the psalmist said this, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the precious oil that flowed from Aaron's head and went all the way down to the skirts of his garment. Thank God. What was the psalmist speaking of? He was speaking of that holy anointing oil that's found in Exodus 30. Praise God. It was used to anoint the vessels in the house of God and to anoint Aaron and his sons for the priesthood. Thank God they, they poured oil upon them. And that oil flowed from Aaron's head all the way way down. I always pray this. And when I'm scheduled to preach, I say, Lord, give me the oil. Thank God. I need the oil as never before. Praise the Lord. Somebody said to you, you mean you still get nervous when you preach? I absolutely do. I spoke to about 10 or 15 a couple of weeks ago, and I'm just as nervous as if there's 5,000. But when the oil comes, thank God. Amen. I, I don't fear man and nor, nor any other thing or person. Praise God. Then they put oil on Aaron's head. And I said, I need the oil on my head. You say, what for? That I might have the mind of Jesus. Thank God. Paul said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Thank God. I need the mind of Christ. This old world, brother, is will fill your mind with everything Amen. in the world. And I, I, I worry about our kids sometimes because every time I look at them, they got a little old game playing. Amen. And I'll tell you something else. I sat in the back now. Somebody said, why do you sit back here? I said, I sit with all, all the other backsliders. But anyway, <laughs> that's just a joke. But I, I'll tell you this. It's not a joke. One service, there's a little boy. He's not here today, I don't believe. But he played the whole service with a, you know, a hand held or something or other. And I, I worry about him. Bless God. We need the oil of the Spirit in our services. And praise God. Young people, you need to keep your mind on the songs and participate in the service. Thank God. And Leave them computers, whatever they are outside. Amen. We don't need them in here. Bless God. He washed her. He clothed her. And then he anointed her. Thank God. And that oil, I said, is found in Exodus uh, chapter 30. It had five ingredients in it. It had the pure myrrh and sweet cinnamon sweet calamus, cassia, and olive oil. And God said, this is not to be put on just any man, but just those. It was a genuine anointing. Brother, it wasn't put to be, to be put on any common man. But thank God it's just for the priest and his sons. I like the genuine anointing of God's spirit. Praise God. I like the genuine thing. It was a genuine anointing. Then it was a generous anointing. Thank God it went from head down to his feet. And then it was a gracious anointing. On oh, that sweet fragrance, you could smell it. Thank God. And so I want the oil on my head. Then I want the oil over my heart. 
thank God that the oil went down over his head and down over his heart. You say, why you need the oil there? Then I might have the heart that Christ had. Oh, listen. The Bible says, be ye kind one another, forgiving one another, as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Brother, how we need the oil of the Spirit to cover our hearts then we will not let any bitterness come in. There are multitudes that are bitter at God. Yeah. Some are bitter at the church. Some are bitter at the preacher. Brother Paul said, let all bitterness and wrath and strife be put away. Thank God we don't need those things in our life. If there's bitterness, I think of the little dove. Uh, it's a type of the spirit. And that little dove, they said, has no gallbladder, and that says to us that there's no bitterness about it. Brother, if there's bitterness in your heart today, thank God for these old-fashioned altars where we can come and pray and get all that sin under the blood of Jesus. And so, praise God, he washed her, and then he clothed her, and then he anointed her, and then he decked her, in verses 11 and 12, he put jewels on her. Thank God put a crown on her head. Yes, he did. Praise the Lord. And put precious stones upon her little body. Thank God. And jewels speak of the riches that we have in Jesus. I love Second Corinthians 8 and 9. It says, For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be made rich. Praise God. That verse says that Jesus was rich up in heaven. I believe he sat on the throne. I believe there may have been a scepter in his hand and a crown on his head, but he laid it all aside. And the psalmist said, Oh, thy garments smell of aloes, cast in myrrh, out of the ivory palaces. Thank God he was rich up there. His feet had never walked on anything but pure gold. A tear had never dimmed his eye. A frost had never chilled the air. Praise God. But Jesus left it all. Praise his name to come to this earth and die for our sin. He was made poor. Praise God. Up in heaven he was rich, but he was made poor born in another man's stable, sailed in another man's boat, rode on another man's donkey, and was buried in another man's tomb. Thank God he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be made rich. Oh, listen, folks, we don't realize today how rich we really are. Thank God we're able to come to a nice church, amen, and worship the Lord in freedom, and don't have to worry about someone by the uh, arresting us or coming in to kill us. Thank God. I told you some time ago, I always thought if I ever wrote songs, and I, I know that's not my calling, but I, th I said before, I'd write songs of praise to the Lord Amen. or songs on the blood. The devil don't like either one. <laughs> Amen. But praise God, I like it. But thank God. Jesus became poor, and you and I, through his poverty, might be made rich. But I'll tell you this morning, thank God. Up in heaven, he's rich again. He owns it all, thank God. And we're joint heirs with him. Thank the Lord forever. All right, real quickly here. Number one, and I'm going to be brief. <clears throat> when I was in a sinking pit, the Lord passed by. Praise God. Psalm 40, David said, He inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of a miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. Put within my mouth a new song, even praise to our God. I don't have time to go into it. But that pit, they said, was a, a hole that was dug in the ground. Most of the time, 
they used it to store grain in. And so it's a picture of the lost man. Uh, we see the fall. He, he had, David talked about this man that had fallen into a, a, a pet brother, and there's no hope of getting out. We see the fall, and we see the wall. These pits were made with inverted walls, a small opening at the top, and it, it went, got large at the bottom. But uh, that man, when you, when you fell into a pit, about all you could do is wait for somebody to come. Well, we see the fall, and we see the call. We see the call. Thank God. And, and that, that man waited as someone came by and called out to him, brother, that he was in that pit. And David said, thank God he lifted me up out of that pit, put my feet on a solid rock, thank God, and established my goings. And so when I was in the second pit, thank God the Lord passed by. When I was in a solitary place, the Lord passed by. I know in 2 Samuel 9, has been gone uh, over many times here. But it's one of the sweetest stories in the Bible about little Mephibosheth. And I know that you're familiar with it. But thank God, that little fellow that lived in Lodabar, the king sent for him. And praise God, he moved into the palace. And the old king said, from this day forward, you're going to eat at my table. Thank God. You're going to be as one of the king's son. But in that ninth chapter, I, I found out some time ago that his son is mentioned, and his name was Micah. Then in First Chronicles, it tells about his grandsons. He had four grandsons. And I, I was coming from Lakeland some years ago listening uh, to a tape by a man a preacher that preached on looking back at Lodabar. And brother, I'm telling you, when he come across this, thank God I had tears in my I like to drove out of the road. But he told, he said, Why well, I can imagine when Mephibosheth was an old man, he might say to one of his grandsons, Son, shove my wheelchair out to the balcony and point me towards Lodabar and said that little boy would roll him out and point the wheelchair toward Lodabar. And he said, I can imagine old Mephibosheth sitting there and the tears began to stream down his face. And one little grandson said, Grandpa, what are you crying about? And he'd say, I was just thinking about where the king brought me from. Praise God. I like to remember where the king brought me from. Thank God I was living in the load of our sin, but the king sent for me. Praise God. And I've been eating from his table ever since. Thank the Lord. Now, when I was in a solitary place, Mephibosheth stayed in load of our. Then when I was in Satan's prison, the Lord passed by and <clears throat> in Luke 13, it tells of a, a poor woman that was bowed together and could no wise lift herself up. And she had been like that for eight, 18 years. Satan had had her bound. But Jesus came and had compassion on her and touched her and healed her, thank God. And she was made straight. She finally going home. And the neighbor said, what in the world happened to you? And she could say, I met Jesus. And thank God he straightened my life out. And he'll do the same for you. Amen. You just need to give your life for it. Years ago, there was a man by the name of Henry Milans. That lay in a hospital in Bellevue, New York. Been treated for alcoholism. And a college professor brought his class around and uh, said to the class, I wanted you to see an incurable inebriate. Here's a man that's lived by the bottom 
he must die by the bottom. Look in these hands, how they shake. Look in these eyes, how they dance. He's led by the bottom. He must die by the bottom. And he went on. A short time later, Henry Miles was released from the hospital. And he was going down the street one night, and he heard singing coming from a little church. He went in and was wonderfully saved. Twenty-five years later, he stood in a testimony meeting. He said, 25 years ago, a man pointed his finger at me and said, Here lies an incurable inebriate. Here lies a drunkard that's lived by the bottom. He must die by the bottom. But he said, What man couldn't do? What science couldn't do? What the doctors couldn't do? He said, Jesus did. And since that night that he saved me, I'm not desired or taken Thank another God. drink. Thank God. God's still able, folks. Yeah. He's still able, thank yeah. God, to save you. And so when I was in a sinking pit, he passed by. When I was in a solitary place, he passed by. When I was in Satan's prison, the Lord passed by. And then lastly, when sorrow plagued, plagued me, the Lord passed by. Listen, we live in a day today in a world that's filled with sorrow. I have never in my life seen more hurting people than I'm seeing today. But Jesus, thank God, can heal the broken heart and bind up the wounds. He still says in Matthew 11, 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Thank God. Come to Jesus. If you're lost, he'll save you. Come to Jesus if your heart is heavy, and he'll give you rest.